An all new at five, a major organized crime bust. 23 people under arrest now accused of stealing guns and cash. Today, police revealed four organized crime groups are wreaking havoc. From aggravated robbery to kidnapping, burglary, and more. Let's take a look at this. New pictures from court documents in this case. These are a few of the people who have been charged. And investigators say the money, tens of thousands of dollars, is all stolen. Welcome to this episode of Chatting with Stacks. I'm your host, Bill Stacks, and today I got Jihad Muhadin from Concrete Chronicles Podcast. Hey! What's happening? How are you, man? Oh, man, you know, same old, same old. I can't call it another day free is a blessing. Definitely. This is how I feel, too. Every day that I'm able to elevate and do things and, you know, progress is a great day. Yeah, don't don't doubt. So how you been, man? How how's uh the show going? How's things going for you? Uh, you know, I'm taking it one day at a time. I got more active with my program and my platform. I have kind of slacked up. I've been more on my Instagram platform than I've been on my YouTube platform. But I had said at the new year that I was gonna start uh taking this getting back on my YouTube platform more strong. So what I got going on on there is uh I got an audio book that I'm uh narrating myself. Uh, of my life story called the love of the dunya you know what i'm saying that's something that i'm getting ready to kick my platform off with but other than that man i've just been chilling man uh taking it easy man just trying to enjoy the enjoy this freedom i got five months left to get off this paper so you know i'm just chilling out i know it seems like forever don't it yeah i had eight years normally the feds let you do half and you can get off uh like i would have did four clean and got off I've been clean seven and a half years. They just ain't let me off. I was on a high profile case. So, um, you know, I guess they have got, got their little foot on my neck. They ain't strict, but they ain't let me off either. You know what I'm saying? So five more months. They don't owe me nothing. The judge said eight years. I would have loved to have got off in four, but uh, it is what it is. So after that, you don't have anything? I'm done. Wow, it's going to feel good. Yeah, I can't wait. So we can travel. My wife a traveler, so I can't wait to to move around with her. She's been going all these places, uh, Italy, Greece, uh, all this stuff all by herself, man. So it's like I can't wait for the uh, to get off this so I can move around with her. Uh, are you going to be able to get a passport? I got my passport already. I was able to get my passport while I was on paper because my PO. I had three different POs in Atlanta. Um, they switched me around, but. Uh, one of them that I had knew that my wife was a traveler. She let me go to the Virgin Islands, which I didn't need no uh, passport for. But my wife wanted to go to Dubai. And when I put in the go, she agreed. She said, go ahead, go get your passport. I'll prove the trip. Like I said, they ain't, they ain't had a foot on my neck. They just ain't let me off early. You know, They let me do pretty much what I want to do. I've been out here seven and a half years doing the right thing. Yeah, so for the people that don't know, do you want to tell them what you were in prison for? What and uh how long did you get and uh and how long you've been out for? So what happened is um I had moved down to Atlanta after I had came home from a state prison bid. I had did four years in the state. Um I had got caught with a Mac eleven, three three keys of cocaine and hundred and twenty thousand in cash in the car. I had got a twelve year sentence in my state. Um, I had went in, I did the four, I moved to Atlanta after I was done. When I was down here, um, I was doing a meat company with my father. He had some trucks on the back of freezers, he's doing door-to-door sales. And uh, I just happened to be out one day and I ran into to my co-defender who was the leader of the case. Um, I ran into him, man. He said, man, I think we got something in common, man. He gave me his number. I never called him. I ended up giving him a call one day out the blue. He wanted to sit down and have lunch. Come find out, he was a real big Huron dealer, you know what I'm saying, from about a, a Senegal, Africa. So, you know, I didn't know nothing about the Huron because in my city, uh, the Hispanics sell the Huron, you know what I'm saying? So, but I happen to come from the number blocks, you know what I'm saying, out East Camden, uh, Camden, New Jersey is where I'm from, and it happens to be mixed, black and Spanish. So, um, one of my good buddies, man, you know, not to say his name or nothing like that, uh, I asked, you know, I had after sitting down with the head of the case and he had told me what he had, told me what, what it could take and uh, all that because her run is a little different from coke, from coke up, coke or crack, whatever they call it. It's not really crack, but coke up. But, uh, you know, it's different. You know what I mean? You got to cut it. You know what I mean? Or people going to die from it. So, you know, I after getting all the information on that, man, I had ended up uh, going back home and talking to one of my buddies and he told me that, you know, 
that a uh, key or her run at the time was 120,000 back then. And he was like, yo, you lucky uh, if you can find a key that could take like a five right now. He said, but you know, I'm getting, I'm getting three of them and I'm, and I'm paying like 90, 90 a piece for them. So I was like, man. So when my man told me he going to give them to me for 45,000 and they could take an 11. Now numbers is going in my head. So I'm like, yo, I could get you one that could take a, a 11. He said, man, you bring a key out here that could take an 11 right now and I give you a hundred thousand for it. So I calls my man up that I had to meet with, like, yo, I need one. And this is how it all started. He said, it don't work like that. Uh, but take this address down. You go over to West Philly, because, you know, we only live across the bridge from Philly, five minutes from us. And he said, you go to this address. They're going to be waiting for you. And, uh, when you get there, they're going to give you some. So I go over there, man, and um, they gave me 30 keys. You know what I'm saying? Did you have to give them money at first? I, to, I ain't going to have to give them nothing. You know what I'm saying? And this is crazy because all, all I ever did was had this one sit down with the dude. What happened? I used to freak with his store. He had a store in the mall, South Decad Mall over in Decatur. And I used to go in and out of his store. So he knew I was a hustler. You know what I'm saying? Because at this time it was pages and cell phones. And I got three, four pages, three, four flip phones. I'm in the store. He like, yo, like, me and you, we got to talk. But uh, anyway, I get over there and I get the 30 bricks and um, I get back with him. So, um, I gets back with my buddy, you know what I'm saying? And he like, uh, I said, heck, go to one, man. Give me the hundred thousand. He said, hold on. I got to see what it takes. You know what I'm saying? So he take it in the crib and they doing what they do at the top of our block. And he like, um, I thought you, he came. I said, I thought you told me it could take an 11. But now I'm like, I got 30 of these pieces. I said, it, it can. He, he, that's what he told me. He was like, man, this thing on a 15 and it's still gunpowder. So that was like even better. Which I didn't even know. Like I don't know nothing about this stuff. I'm learning about this as we go on right now at this time. Yeah. So he's like, yo, man, um, how many of these things can you get? Now I'm in. I'm from the street, so I'm like, you know, all I gotta do is make a call. I'm never gonna tell him I got 30 pieces. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, yeah. Uh, I said, all I gotta do is make a call. I can get as many as me. So he start calling all the notable dudes in our city, not to say their names. You know what I'm saying? People from my city know exactly who these people are. You know what I'm saying? That was in this game at the time. So he start calling them. They putting in an order for 10, 25. And um, I knocked 30 off in two days, right? And not only that, I ended up having to go back over and get 20 more the, that same day. So that was like 50 in two days. So you're paying uh, them the money right back when you go back? Oh, yeah, when I went over, I took them, you know what I mean, what I owed them. It was 45 a piece, you know what I mean, for them all. And, and um, I don't know nothing at the time. So I'm selling them raw like that. I'm only and I'm selling them at this time for 80 bands. You know what I'm saying? I'm just trying to double the money. But it's cool to me because they going for 120 and my my head in my city it's always been about the quick flip. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. I'm getting rid of them. I'm cool. So uh, you know, time goes, you know, I took care of that. Time goes by, you know, and I ends up getting back with my man because now I want to start up a little flow on my block because we got we got the coke out there but we don't got no heron out there so i want to start up a little flow so i go to him and, and you know i make a deal with him like yo um let's go half i kind of told him a lie i said yo i'm getting them for like 80 you know what i'm saying let's take the 80 out and then break down the middle so i'm already making double off of it yeah. you know what i'm saying and we started the, we started a, a stamp called freddie cougar together and we had Pokemon. We had Freddy Cougar, and we went to Pokemon together. And um, it was lucrative for me because I'm like one of the only ones of my color that's moving this in my city. You know what I'm saying? So, like, it, it, it kind of like my name blew up. And Have you, know, you had anyone approach you trying to tax you for while you're doing well, this? Well, well, I ain't, I ain't, you know, ain't, I ain't going to play like I'm this big, bad gangster, this, that, but I ain't never had no real problems like that. I ain't never been robbed, and I ain't, ain't and because I, you know, I don't be doing no whole lot of playing either. Like, in my city, you got dudes that get money, and they be soft, and you got dudes that get money, and they don't go for nothing, and they going to put you down. You know what I'm saying? Like, in, um, before I ever got money, I, I was playing with that gun. You know what I'm saying? So a lot of people already know that, like. Bro ain't going for nothing. You know, I mean, not yeah. only that, I always we had our block is like a strong team. We had a real strong team on our block. You know, what I'm saying like, like, they know it's all the blind. I ain't gonna take nothing from nobody in our city because that city is crazy. But you know, you you gonna lose your life out there. Ain't nobody really trying to die. You know, what I'm saying we coming. You know no saying? associates getting robbed or anything like I that. I had that problem. You know, what I'm saying like 
all praise to God. You know what I'm saying? I ain't had that problem. You know what I mean? And um, back then it was real more about everybody was more about getting money. It ain't like it is like when I was away hearing about how, you know, things changed, the murder game, the kids killing it. It wasn't like that. Like people got killed. It was for a reason. You know what I'm saying? Like when somebody was dying back then, it was for a reason. You know what I'm saying? Like now they're killing over, over girls. They killing over he say she say they killing just because you know what I'm saying but um it wasn't like that we was more about getting the money like these little young boys I ain't even don't they can ain't even about no money and they not even touching no money and this is one thing that I like that I always say like y'all out here putting people down when you go to jail you ain't even got commissary money let alone commissary I mean, you can't even bail yourself out or get a lawyer you know what I'm saying so yeah. you ain't doing nothing out here you just squeezing the trigger you know what I'm saying but senseless murders man you know but it wasn't really like that when i was coming up you know what i mean it was more about making the connection and getting some money now you got these rappers run off on the plug uh get high off of this on well, my block you wasn't allowed to smoke weed like all we was a lot like a lot of people come from my block is drinkers like because our, our big homies if they caught you smoking weed you was considered like a fiend like you wasn't getting no work so a lot of like a lot around my way a lot of people wasn't even don't get high you know what i'm saying so we was more into getting money. We was groomed a little different, and that's the problem with the streets today. A lot of the old heads, myself, like I'm an old head now, like I wasn't out here, and a lot of us are dead and in prison doing long terms. Like, so we didn't get to groom these youth. They came up on their own off and let these rappers raise them with these lyrics. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But yeah, I ended up, um, I had a 17 month run with them folks, man, with this Huron. Did you a make whole, a lot of money? Are you stacking the money I up? A, I, made whole, I made a whole bunch of money, man. I made a whole bunch of money. I was telling my wife at the hype of the whole situation, which I didn't even know we was under investigation. I had a whole bunch of money. I don't even want to say what it was, but when they came in my house and, and locked me up, I got caught with 760000 in cash. So this is what they do with the feds. What I want all you dudes out there to know that you think of you nickel slick, you ain't talking on the phone. I ain't on I'm on the wiretap, but I'm not on there talking about no drugs. And um the, the DEA agent said, man, they're gonna give you life, man, because of your prior convictions, because you're gonna get charged as a career offender if you got two drug charges or two crimes of violence with your with your federal charge, or a crime of violence and a drug charge with your federal charge, you charge as a career offender, which won't double or triple your time. You feel me? So he said, Man, you're gonna get life and we don't even really want you. We don't even got you on really no wiretaps. All you got caught with the money. They basically want you to tell something, which I don't know how to do. So I'm like, man, listen, um, I ain't did nothing. But, you know, I got careered out on an 846. That's a conspiracy case. And the 841 is the possession of the narcotic. And um, I got 360 months, man. So what happens is the feds got something called relevant conduct. I don't have no control buys on my case. I didn't get caught with any drugs in my house. But I got caught with the seven hundred and sixty thousand dollars. So they, with the relevant conduct, is conduct which is relevant to the case. So they took the seven hundred and sixty thousand and turned it into five keys or more heroin because it's a heroin conspiracy and charged me with five keys or more heroin with no dope. When I came in, it was something called ghost dope. That's the case I got a ghost dope case. So getting caught, them they said the money was equivalent to this amount of drugs, and that's what was attributed to me five keys or more. And that's how my 360 months came into play. So you think you out there shaking and moving, you, 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 you slick this thing since oil, you, you doing it this way, they don't know nothing about you, you ain't got nothing in the career, they don't need nothing in the career. But the feds go off a of hearsay, they can have a dude say, listen, I was buying, a, I was buying, we could say something small. He said, I was buying an ounce from him. And the feds say, how many times a week was you buying an ounce? Two times a week, for how long? For a year, they're going to add the two ounces a week up for a year, and that's going to be your drug week off of hearsay. You feel me? And you're going to get a life sentence behind you. You feel me? So, um, the game, man, it's like it's not like it used to be. Like, the game really is over. Like, especially the day, there ain't even no money in the streets really no more. Like, my ears to the street, I got people that's you not know I mean still around, and I still hear things, you know what I'm saying? And I'm saying, like, it don't even, it's not even worth it. To risk your life and freedom out there for what's going on out there today because it ain't no money out there. I mean, in our time, like I said, me and my me and my co-defendant, we we started the block up, and people know how Haram block is on. Like that thing was doing 20, 30, 40, 50 thousand a day in nickels. They lined up around the corner, right? And early in the morning, that first rush, 
man, that line, man, when we open up, that line be two blocks long, man. Like, you know, and then all through the day, they coming from everywhere, all the little outskirts of the city, the little other little towns, people coming in from, it was crazy, you know what I'm saying? But the money ain't like that no more, you know what I'm saying? But that's how it was when I was out there, you know what I mean? Which I thought was worth me uh, uh, taking a chance at uh, throwing that rock at that glass house. I, I always say I wouldn't change nothing that I did in my life because everything I did and all the time that I did and things that I went through made me who I am today and able to talk about these things. And and a person that you're talking to receiving your message because they know that it's real. Because when I was coming up, we had people to talk to us, but we used to be like, man, that, he talking from a book, man. He ain't come from, he don't come from where we come from. Yeah. That's one thing about these youth, these youth region. They know when you're real and when you ain't. You know what I'm saying? So um, we ended up catching the case. I ended up getting locked up with 33 people. You know what I'm saying? I got 32 co-conspirers in me. We made 33. Um, I was the baby on the case because I was 24 at the time. But I did the most time on the case too. I had 30 years. I did 24. I did 20 years and eight months. Four. I got out four years early. You know what I'm saying? Which I was supposed to did 25, but the Johnson case fell. So while I was in, I became a certified paralegal. I didn't waste my time. I did eight years of correspondence course through the Indiana uh, University of Law. So I took up criminal um, AA. I got an A and B A in criminal justice, but I specialized in federal law because I was in the feds. So I got helped a lot of notable people get out of jail, and it took me 20 years to get myself out off of an argument that came down through the Supreme Court called Johnson that I had been arguing for years, 17, 18 straight years. I've been arguing the same thing. They let me in on it, even though it was an armed career criminal case. But the elements that I, that they spoke on that you had to meet to make this armed career criminal, I, I brought those same elements up in my argument saying you had to meet them to be a career offender. So they let me out on immediate release and then they closed the door so no other career offenders could come out behind me which was a shame oh. too so yeah. whoever else with that same charge is stuck there with them same elements of the case yeah they ended wow. up being stuck man but um that's the way the feds play they play a dirty game you know what i'm saying but we ended up getting indicted i went through all that man i did um i ended up catching the time and i started I started my time at a, at, a, at a prison called a USP Terror Hut, which at this time was one of the worst federal prisons that you want to be in. They used to call it the death house. One reason why is because death row is uh, housed there. You know what I'm saying? And uh, D block, <laughs> death row is on D block. And uh, I was on E block right next door to death row. But another reason why is because it's gangland. You know, that's the Midwest, that's Indiana. And all of the gangs from Chicago and all them little Little Iowa, Rock, all that. All that's there, you know what I'm saying? Because that's their region. So I met a lot of notable I learned a lot about gang uh, gang life there, right? Because home we didn't have gangs like Bloods and Chris. That stuff really came while I was in the feds, the beginning of my fed bid, because somebody from Cali had came in and was doing time in Jersey and started the blood thing up and introduced it to our state. And that now is big, but it's huge. We didn't, have no big. we didn't have bloods and crew. We had no gangs. I mean, we represented our blocks and projects where you know in Jersey where we was from, but we ain't never blood, crit, gang cycle, all that. We not we never had that. So I learned about the culture of that in Terror Hut while I was down there because I learned that these gangs, their grandparents, parents, as well as themselves been in these gangs. This is a culture. Which was, uh, I think they say it started out as being like a, a, a like a, a a movement, like the Panthers, you know what I'm saying? Like empowerment to empower the, the neighborhood, the people of the neighborhood. And then, you know, I guess they got the beefing with each other, how that started. I, I don't really remember all of that or no, because I'm not from there. But I met a lot of head, big head, 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 head of those gangs that was there. You know, Latin, Latin kings, Latin, Latin cobras and vice lords and all different sects of that and gds like I, it, it was like um i had learned a lot there man and i uh, gained a different respect for the gang because i seen that it was a lifestyle for them they wasn't just joining it to be a part of something this thing was generations <laughs> you know what i mean of families being in that but yeah i started in terror hut and i was a young guy and you know just like any prison man you know this is one thing men got to know women too you ain't gonna go to no hard institution, man, and with that mask on, uh, like whatever you kind of mask you got on out here in these streets, 
or you running around, you busting your gun, and there ain't no gun. It's knobs, big ones, small ones. It's gasoline. You know, somebody might throw some of that on you in your cell, light you.